Hi everyone. Today I'm redoing a video that I had done in the past because I realized um, unfortunately that the resolution was messed up and when I was scrolling around and describing things on the map, um, you couldn't see what I was doing. So I'm going to attempt to redo that here. I'm not going to go into as much detail as I did in that other video because it would take too long and that video is still there. So I'll link to it. You'll be able to go back to it if you want to. But basically, I'm going to discuss, again, how the poem could be describing two different places in the world, okay, and two different points in Forrest's life. And some of this is based on um, a discovery that was made by a, a guy who posts as the name of O. And basically, I'm not going to get into it too much, but he's discussed a lot about two numbers that appear throughout the chase, and one of them is 109, and the other one is 43. And he's interpreting those as longitude and latitude. So there's nothing new there. Unfortunately, he deleted a lot of his posts. So basically, um, the discovery that he made is that if you look at the uh, longitude line of where uh, Forrest Fenn was based when he was in Vietnam, which is right here, this is his base, okay, which is just south of a place called Toi Hoa. I'm probably butchering these names. I'm sorry, but I don't I don't know Vietnamese uh, language. So, but if you look at the uh, bottom right corner of my screen here, down here, you can see the longitude and latitude and the elevation. Well, his base is roughly at 109. Okay, 109.20. I think it's 109. And then if you look at uh, Toi Hoa downtown, it's at 109.17. Okay, and 13.06, of course, because it's lower south than we are north we're in relation to the equator. But right now, we're just going to focus on the, the longitude line. So 109 runs right up here, okay? And he was stationed basically in this base. And this is where he took off both times that he was shot down in Vietnam before he came home. Now, um, a couple of things I need to describe over here. And um, and a lot of this is from the story, My War for Me, which is a pretty uh, important story in the book. I call it the book within the book um, because the first few pages of My War for Me appear uh, very similar to a preface, like the preface we have in The Thrill of the Chase on page four, okay? So when you look at uh, the preface, the actual chapter of My War for Me actually appears to start on page 76. Anyway, I want now that I got that out of the way, a couple of things I want to explain here, and this may not be totally accurate, but this red line here is the demilitarized zone uh, for the, uh, the Vietnam War, okay? North Vietnam, South Vietnam. This brown line is what they call the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's, uh, my brown line is not accurate because it's actually a wide swath that begins up around here and it goes all the way down and basically it's a, it's a series of trails and different paths through uh, the forest and stuff where they would use for uh, supply runs okay from north vietnam down to uh, south vietnam and i'm not going to get into that again because if you want to read about the history of the war you're, you're certainly uh, welcome to do so i'm just mentioning what forrest talks about in the book so we have the Ho Chi Minh Trail, which is the, the brown line, okay? A lot of the bombing runs that Forrest did was on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, according to what he says in the book. Um, they would go in there and basically clear a swath so that the ground troops can, can travel, okay? And again, this is the demilitarized zone here. So technically, up here is the enemy, and down here is South Vietnam, right? But that's not really the case because there was a lot of attacks that we had suffered in South Vietnam. All right. And I'm not going to get into it. I mentioned it in the other one, but there was something called the Tet Offensive, if you want to read about it. And basically, there's a series of attacks that occurred all around here. So Forrest might have had to go on some runs to those areas. Certainly, it was a pretty big deal. But, but in, in any case, this red line is the military zone. This brown line is the Huchiman Trail, roughly. Okay, so now that we, get, we got that out of the way, let me explain some of the other stuff that I have going on around here. 
if you read the, the story about War for Me, when Forrest was shot down the last time, he was doing a bombing run again at the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Now, incidentally, I, I plotted out here, this is where the Ho Chi Minh Trail monument is. So it doesn't necessarily mean that he went here, but he was doing bombing runs along here. He was shot down close to Chapone, Laos, okay, which which is a village over here. Now, he was shot down, obviously not in the middle of the village, somewhere near here, and, um, and that's where he was rescued from. Now, so basically he would come out in his F-100, he would take off from the airport down here, and he would probably follow a bearing similar to this yellow line as he would head up. Maybe he was farther west, I don't know, but he would do wherever wherever his orders were to bomb would usually be somewhere along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Okay. So that's basically the bearing that he would track with his F-100. And he would come up to around here. And again, don't, you know, this is enemy territory here too. It's not just above the demilitarized zone. Anyway, so he did his bombing runs, and you could read the story in the Thrill of the Chase. It's also online. He describes pretty much what, what went on here when he would fly this flight, and he would go up here and do bombing runs, and and he would whiffer dill back, and you know he would he would you know come back and forth. Those were his runs. And again, he was shot down somewhere up around here, up near. Uh, Teshpone or Chapone. Okay. Now, this red circle that I have here is 315 miles from his base. The green circle is 157 mile uh, radius from his base. So 157 miles to here and 315 miles to here. The reason why I put those circles there is because when Forrest was, the last time he was shot down, a few days later, he went back to visit the special place that he always talked about, that he had seen on his flight up here, beneath his left wing and to the northwest, so roughly 300 and something degrees in, the, in that direction, somewhere beneath it. So somewhere to the left of this yellow line, approximately, somewhere down around here, okay, he would see that, that area. And every time he flew over, he kept promising himself that someday he was going to go back to that spot. Well, two days before he came home, so this, I guess, would be December 22nd, um, 1969, right? So on December 22nd, he went to, um, he took a helicopter out, and he went to go visit his special place. Now, if you read uh, about his story, he kind of describes that they took off from uh, Toyoa, headed north, obviously. He talks about the trees, and then he talks about a clearing that he's seen that appeared at a roughly 11 o'clock, which would somewhere, like I said, about 310 degrees, whatever, worked its way under his left wing, and, and so on. And his bombing runs again were the Ho Chi Minh Trail in 1968. So... On December 20th, he was shot down, as I just said, near Chapone, Laos. And on December 22nd, he took that helicopter. Now, in Vietnam, he doesn't mention the helicopter that they took when he went to go visit. But I'm going to assume that it was a Bell UH-1 Iroquois, which was also nicknamed the Yui. It was the most popular helicopter and likely the one that he took. It was an army pilot that took him in the helicopter. So again, I'm going to assume here that it's a Yui. Okay. Now, if we look at the specs for the Yui, its range is 315 miles. And I'm talking regular miles here, not nautical miles. 350 miles is actually 274 nautical miles. But I'm going to deal with just straight miles here and make it easy for everybody. So its range is 315 miles. If it took off from here at its base, and it flew to where this red circle is, it'd run out of gas because that's the maximum range that it can go before it would have to refuel. And you'd probably be pushing it at that because, um, you know, depending on the speed that they're flying, you would never run that low on fuel. So to be realistic here, we could divide that range by two. So instead of 315, we have 157 miles, okay? 
So that would mean that he would be able to go out 157 miles and then return, and they would be almost out of fuel when they return. So we could probably assume that he didn't go probably even 157 miles. And he says that the trip took roughly an hour in the helicopter. Well, that helicopter's cruise speed is 125 miles an hour. But uh, that's, that's under good circumstances and at the correct cruising altitude. He had to be, they had to be careful because they were flying in enemy territory. So they were probably closer to the tops of the trees, flying at a lower altitude, which means you're going to burn more fuel and you're going to be flying slower than that. So he probably did not go over, let's say, if they traveled exactly an hour, he probably didn't go over 90 or 100 miles. So let's look at what we have out here at this green circle at 127 miles. We're going to move back a little bit because he says that when he went to that place, after he got on the ground, he discovered that there were French graves there. Well, I think the, the French grave is indicating the French Indochina War. And that war occurred in, um, in 1945 to, I think, 1950, 58, 59. I don't, I don't remember. But the, uh, on uh, June 24th in 1954, there was something called the Group Mobile or the Mobile Group 100. Uh, uh, the, the, it was the, the highest uh, French casualties in that war. Where they were going, okay, they were, they were over... They were stationed over here at this place. I don't even, boy, I'm going to butcher this. And key, on key, whatever. Okay. They were here and they, they were coming out. They came out of here, Pliku Lai. I don't want to butcher it again. So there's rough, that's roughly 50 miles distance from here to there. Well, they got information that they were told to leave their defensive position over here okay and then head back well they headed back down this road which is ql19 they came back down this road and they there's there's an area and again you can research that the indo indo china war if you want to know what this stuff is but somewhere between strong point five and bridge 25 they were ambushed and actually this this whole area was called the ambush alley because a lot of ambushes occurred here but this was the most devastating one for the french they lost a lot of troops here okay and so many i mean it, it's bad if you look online you can see pictures where they basically had dead bo dead bodies scattered all along the road all in the fields and in the gullies and stuff like that and they took them and they, they buried them in, in makeshift graves you could see them all along the sides of the road dotted all over the place well, at some point, um, and, and again, that happened on, in 1954 on June 24th. At some point, and I think it was in the, in the mid-60s, they moved some of the French people and they reburied them up here north of Mangang Pass. Okay? So, again, you could see spots. I don't, I don't know exactly where they are, but there's a lot of graves up here. A lot of French graves. They basically dotted the sides of the road. And what happened was, after the war was over, we had an agreement, or they had an agreement with France, I guess, that they took all of the bodies, at least the ones that were, that were, they knew who the next of kin was, and they sent them back to be reburied in um, France. And the ones who were unidentified ended up staying here, and they, they were moved. I forgot exactly where the graves were moved to. But they were moved in the, uh, this, I think it happened, in, this might have been in the late 70s when that one happened. They moved them over to another grave and they basically took the old graves and they put lye in there, I guess, to help the stuff decompose. And they basically buried it all over. So the, mass, the cemeteries and stuff that they had were gone. And of course, you know, all on the road, now this area has become populated. There's residential areas and stuff and towns and stuff built on where the graves used to be so if you look in this area now on the right maps you can see dotted they look like tombstones but they're not tombstones there's like white dots all over the place and those are from the lime when the soil was back retilled and everything like that you can still see them 
if you travel on this road. And a lot of veterans do. They'll come down here. And the reason why they'll come down here is because if you come up this way, right here, where the mobile, uh, they have a, 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 a French Indonesia, uh, French Indochina memorial for the war there. Okay. And then they have Strong Point 5 is marked. And somewhere, or actually all over the place along this road, but at one place, there's an obelisk. And I haven't been able to track down this, the precise location of the obelisk. I'll show you a picture of it. But the obelisk is somewhere on the south side in these fields where they call the Ambush Alley. This is where all the fighting occurred up in here. Okay. Up basically between Strong Point 5 and what they call Bridge 25. You know, so this is a major, major area. And, you know, as far, as far as the history with the French goes and with the war, and Forrest is talking about French graves. And I'm not saying this is the only place where the French fought, but this is probably really likely where he would have found the grave would have been somewhere up in this area, which, as you know, you can see that yellow line, which is his flight path. That would be... If this was 12 o'clock when he's flying, okay, if I, if I rotate this to 12 o'clock, okay, Mangang Pass would roughly be 11 o'clock over his left wing, and he would pass off. So his special place in Vietnam is somewhere over here. Um, I don't know where. I put a bunch of markers here just to show you that there's spots that you can look at. Um, you basically would have to take a map find all the waterfalls and you could probably locate precisely where that place was but it's not going to be far from mang yang pass and it's not going to be far from any of this because this is where they suffered the, the most casualties so if we go down to his base and then we take the helicopter trip let's just use a line here for now and i'll leave this as regular miles but note the degrees here watch watch what happens so I'm going to go down to Toyoa, which is where he was based, and they flew up in this direction. And let's say that they flew roughly to Mangyang Pass. That's roughly 100 miles. That's, this is probably as far, as I said, that he would have went in the helicopter. So if we look, this is roughly 318, 320 degrees, you know, 90 or 80 some odd miles up around in here that the helicopter would have probably fl uh, flown that round trip. Okay. So let's take a look now. Now, remember, this is, again, 109. It's not exactly 109. 109 is, this is one, 110 begins here. So 109, this is 108, 108, 108. 109 is right here. So Toyo again, 109.17. Okay. So let's go to Kerwin. And this is the part that O discovered. So if we look at Kerwin, Kerwin, downtown Kerwin, if you look down here again, is 109.17. So the only thing we had to do was flip east and west. We're at the same longitude line. We flipped east and west, and we went from downtown Kerwin over to Vietnam, where he was based. So let's just say again, just for grins and giggles, we got to use our imagination with the poem. So let's say the poem was discussing his war. Okay. So now we're trying to find, let's say, where warm waters halt. And warm waters halted in Vietnam <clears throat> at the place, I'm, I'm assuming, where he went, his special place, um, somewhere in that area, right? So, so let's do the same thing here. We're at Kerwin. We're going to come up. I already did it with these lines, okay? So we're going to fly from Kerwin, and we're going to fly 320 degrees, okay? And we're going to fly roughly 84 to 90 miles, so somewhere around here. Now, this is the end of the line. This is 84 miles, okay? This is where, in The Thrill of the Chase, is a picture of Skippy standing next to a rock on page 56. That was taken right here. 
This is the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone. This is the Grand Loop Road. Comes up around this way. So if we if we take this line, and I'll go to properties on it, and you can watch. I'll go to measurements. All right, and we can look as I drag this line around. It's not going to show me the degrees, but you can see that if we were going to mirror the world from one side to the other, if we were flying to a special place um, over here, that would end up taking us into Yellowstone National Park, somewhere along the Grand Loop Road, just north of the canyon, which would be down from us. Okay, And incidentally, up here, this is where, uh, this is where, uh, what do you call it, Mammoth, Mammoth Hot Springs is. And this is Highway 212 meets the Grand Loop Road. This is the western terminus of 212, which, of course, is the boiling point of water. The eastern terminus of this road is in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. So if you jumped on 212 in Minnesota, headed west, you would end up right here. So, you know, look how we're kind of pretty close there. Could this be where warm water salt or this? And again, if you begin it where warm water salt and it was the, the Grand Loop Road and you took it into the canyon down, there would be no question that this would be the canyon down because there, this is the m main canyon in Yellowstone. So anyway, I'm not going to get into solve anymore at that point. I just wanted to point out that if we were to use our imagination and pretend that that forest childhood play area was actually the war area in Vietnam, and this was where he was based in Kerwin when he flew out to the same exact you know, distance to where his special place is in Vietnam, that would put his special place right smack here in the middle of Yellowstone. Or if you inverted it, maybe the special place is Kerwin. That's up to you to come up with a solve. I'm not doing that. Now, one thing I wanted to mention while I was here, and this is the part that got cut off from the other video. Since we mirrored 109 from east to west, because we went from Vietnam over to Wyoming. <clears throat> Maybe it's not supposed to go in this direction. Maybe instead of 320 degrees, we're mirroring that to 40, 40 some odd degrees. Well, 45 degrees this is where the medicine wheel is. But this is roughly where 84 miles is. So if you came out from Kerwin and went to the medicine wheel and then came out from here and then went the same distance, you'd would be roughly somewhere near, you know, south or somewhere near the the, the town of Mama Hot Springs. All right. Now this brown is uh, Yellowstone National Park. Everything in here. This blue is the eastern border of the Shoshone National Forest. When you leave Yellowstone on this road, as soon as you go through the gate and then go up over Sylvan Pass. You're now in the canyon that takes you down to Cody, okay? It takes you through the Shoshone Forest. You leave a border here, enter the Shoshone National Forest. You follow the Shoshone National Forest, and you exit the border here, which is at Wapiti. And then you come down along the river again, and then you end up in the Re uh, Bo Cody Reservoir. And, of course, here's Cody. Uh, so, And then Kerwin, again, is down here. Matitsi is over here and of course there's roads leading all up in here so anyway i just wanted to put this out there because i, I apologize when i came out with this last time um i was in the wrong resolution and i all you could see is like this side of the screen and i'm describing stuff and i'm talking about over here um and also the same thing over in um Toyo. i was zoomed in too far west and i'm talking about his base and stuff which is over here and meanwhile i'm looking in areas that were over here and incidentally the the road that starts here to 19 this road goes down um over to here it actually ends here but um there's a, a, quite a few interesting things if you research the war this is that what they called devil's hairpin when they were leaving the area they have to slow down to like four miles an hour 
to go around this curve. And uh, people were ambushed all along this road. But the majority of the ambushes occurred right here. And this is where the French suffered their strongest, uh, our largest loss. And the bodies were buried, were all along the side of the road. They were gathered, taken, and buried up around here, up in the pass. Because they buried, they wanted to get them out away from where, you know, where the people were. I guess there was farms and all other kinds of things down here on this plateau. And then, of course, now up here we're in higher elevation. And they buried them all north. Uh, and then over here's another place called Dead Man's Curve. You'll see a lot of it if you research the war. Um, a couple other things I want to ma mention about this. If you read in the book, when he talks about Skippy, you know he, when he says when Skippy died, they should have buried him standing up. Well, it's, it was common. And, and in fact, that's exactly what they did here. They buried all the French in a standing position. And they were all facing west towards France. Okay. So west. You know, being this way, of course. So they buried them all standing and facing in that direction. So the chances where he found that grave were probably somewhere around here. I don't really have any doubts about it I, um, when he stumbled on that uh, French grave. Uh, I, and like I said before, at the battleground, somewhere around here, there's an obelisk. It's about six feet tall and it's packed with bullet holes and stuff in it. And it declares. In two different languages, French and Vietnamese, it says here on June 24th, 1954, soldiers of France and Vietnam died for their countries. Now, it doesn't say it in English. It says it in French, and it says it in Vietnamese. That's what is on the obelisk. Forrest didn't find an obelisk, but, you know, he's telling you a story. He might be, you know, using that as an example. Why would he give us examples of places in Vietnam? Because he's mirroring two different parts of his life, okay? He's, he's, he's back when he was a child. He was unbiblically uh, attached to Yellowstone and his mother, okay, in, back in his early days, all right? Well, if you read in the Vietnam, uh, My War for Me, he only uses the word unbiblical in one place in that entire book, The Thrill and Chase, and that's on page 76. Which is which I'm calling is the the actual first page of that chapter because page seventy five and prior are more like a lead in for that chapter or a preface. Now the obelisk, in case you want to research it, and they mention a lot of things by mile markers. For example, this point is fifteen miles exactly from the end of uh, where I have this red line from this town. This is where the Frenchmen were. They left us. And they made it back, I mean, 15 kilometers, not miles. They made it back uh, 15 kilometers. Uh, and then that's where they went up around here. And this is where they were ambushed. So you know, the memorial's there. I, I have some pictures here I can show you. This is a picture of that monument that you would find 15 kilometers west of that place that I just pointed out. Basically, there's stuff on this plaque. The dirt roads here. And we're looking south, by the way. You go up these stairs to the south, and there's a bunch of uh, plaques up in here about the Indochina War. The obelisk, it looked like that. And I think this picture was taken in the 70s. This is what it looks like now. And these are the two sayings. It's in Vietnamese on one side and French on the other. Okay? This is all that's there now. Uh, is that what Forrest tripped over? If we find that, do we find a special place? I don't know. Here's another picture of that with um, an army guy. Like I said, it's pretty common for a guy, especially even French, would come out here and they would come and, and leave things at this obelisk. And it's kind of sad. I mean, this is in the middle of nowhere in some bush. It certainly would not, would not be a place that you would be uh, happy and, and think happy thoughts. Um, but we don't know what his special place is, and we don't know why it would be special to him. But he, you know, again, I think that there might be two stories going on here, and I just wanted to redo this video because I messed up the previous one. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.